show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. Hey. Welcome. Hey. How's everyone doing today? Great. Oh, good. So good. You know, I always do, I feel really good the day after Beyonce drops something. Of course. <laughs> it just like lets me know that there's hope to be had. Our Lord and Savior. Uh, did you guys see her Vogue cover? Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. What did you guys think? Seen it. Uh, <laughs> oh. Cool, you saw it. Sweating, good. sweating. That's no, 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 it's good. A... It's good. I just see, I see so much of her. True. I, I don't see enough of her. I think <laughs> yeah. it's a wonderful, beautiful yeah. cover. We've talked about it. The, the first black photographer yeah, in the entire Yeah, Tyler Mitchell, 23 years old. Vogue's entire history. And in it, she says really, like, she has this one thing which I really love that she said that they, um, they kind of ask her, like, it's not really an interview, more just like she makes these statements. Yeah. One of, like, what's the best moment of this past tour. She says performing in Berlin at the site of the 1936 mm -hmm. Olympics where Jesse Owens won four gold medals and kind of breaking the myth of white supremacy mm -hmm. at a time which, for you kids out there, that was when the Nazis were coming yeah. around. So like, it's just really like, she kind of puts her whole kind of career and the, the her icon, her, how iconic she is into context yeah. of black history, and I just think it's really fascinating. As we've discussed before, she is very controlled with her image. Like yeah. you said, this wasn't like a normal interview. She was not gonna have that. It was very controlled, but I feel like she was very honest. She talked about her delivery, how she gained a lot of weight during pregnancy with twins, how she's not in a rush to lose it, and how she's kind of embraced her fupa, like that. <laughs> Woo! But yeah. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we Finally. need more fupa positivity. This is what yeah. I'm saying. Oh, I'm just like, sometimes I'm at this desk and I'm like, oh, what, what can I do? Especially then? with these high, <laughs> to be on these high Pants, you're yeah. like, there's just fupa everywhere. The high waisted pants are the only thing that's keeping me from fupaing out onto the table. <laughs> Seriously. So, yeah. Beyonce, thank anyway, you. Anyway, Beyonce, love her. We love Beyonce. Yeah. Well, Wands at the Ready, Witches and Wizards, because what once was Harry Potter Weekend is now Harry Potter Week. 141 Cinemark theaters across the United States are gearing up to bring back every single Harry Potter film to the big screen Woo! to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the first book's US release. <sighs> the event, known as Wizarding World XD Week, will run from August 31st through September 6th. Dun 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 Guys, when, when I first went for my first time to the Wizarding World in Orlando and that song played, Isn't it amazing? Tears in my eyes as I looked at Hogwarts. No joke, my family's like, Lucas, you okay? I just was crying slowly to myself. When you first walk into the park yeah. and you hear that music so, and you see what you see. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I the can't. buildings, I mean, I'm thinking of like Gringotts right yeah. now in the new park yeah, in yeah. Orlando. And you see and you see all of your fellow wizards. Wizards. <laughs> in Everyone's their, still waiting for that letter. They're cloak, still waiting for it. And their wands and their owls. I oh, mean, you feel I, at, at home. home. At home, at home, at home. Oh I, my God. Guys, I just want to wear a cape every day. And that, and that place allows you to wear a cape freely. I felt it too. I felt so at oh. home. I got a dark mark tattoo. Of course it is. And I was right. wearing it around the park. Oh, like, I think it's like really so crazy. So this yeah. morning, you have a fupa too? Yeah. Fupa. We love Harry Potter. We're not trying to exclude you. Well, so this morning we were talking about which houses we would be. And we uh, realized that Lucas would be Gryffindor. I would be Slytherin, Shannon would be Hufflepuff, and Brittany would be Ravenclaw. Yeah. And we're each one of the houses. Um, and well, we took I took the Pottermore quiz um, this morning. Yeah. And I, I mean, because I knew I would be talking about it on the show, not like regularly. Um, and I actually got Gryffindor, which was really surprising to me because whenever I take these quizzes, I'm always telling myself like, don't answer in a way that you want to answer as someone who's read the books. I'm like, you know, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. So I was answering in a way that I felt was very true, and I was very surprised to see that I got Gryffindor, but then um, I started thinking about, and I think Lucas will agree with me on this, mm. that there are some really striking similarities between the Gryffindor house and the Slytherin house. Yeah, I mean, because if you look at most famous Gryffindor people, um, you know, Albus Dumbledore, of course, we learned how he, his fault was that he also had a quest for power, and that's a very Slytherin thing. And we look at Sev Severus Snape, who was in Slytherin also and Harry ended up and calling him the most the brave, bravest hero. man he ever knew. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway. What show is this right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Harry Potter tribute. Where did we just go? We went, we went, to, we went, we went to we Hogwarts went to a magical or land where we could all uh, be Full disclosure, I've never, I saw one of the movies. I never yeah. read the books. But I'm excited that it's going to be in theaters because I actually might. Yeah. I think I wanted to see it on the big screen. You should go you and should watch it. it because it's scary. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, Because I don't like magic. scary things. Yeah. Yeah. You should definitely go. I mean. And if you buy a week-long pass, only $25. Right, which is the best so part for of all it. And eight, an unlimited refills. Yeah. yeah. You're so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I love Harry Potter so much. I literally have this marathon like once a year. Yeah. I don't need it to be re-released. I literally watch all of the movies with my family at least, like once every like six months. Right. I was like, we should just watch this. And I'm like, okay, you so got three good. days. Do right. you think it's more fun to see it on the big screen though? Like, is that a different experience? I mean, I think it's fun, but I pee a lot. <laughs> so you need, yeah. So I don't like to you be, like, stop it. like, I don't want to go leave the movie theater. I also don't like to be around other people. <laughs> yeah. but Even I, when cool. they're dressed up, I feel like this is going to be a cool event because everyone's going to dress up and they're going to do exactly what you just did in public. No, I know. Okay. Maybe I, I won't go. I like my fam I like being around, like, people I, I know but, and yeah. their excitement. I don't want to deal with randoms because then they're weird. <laughs> but if it's my family, it's funny. Yeah, you know no, but I mean? then when you're in, like, I remember when I saw Order of the Phoenix when theaters and that's the when... Book. And when fifth book and fifth movie, and then when Dumbledore comes out of the fireplace, it was foolish you to come here tonight, Tom. Ooh. And they, they start oh. the duel. I was like, woo! -hoo! <laughs> and my older brother was like, Lucas, stop it, stop it. But everyone around me was like, yeah, Dumbledore. That so is that so kind of like, it's the one of the most amazing duels ever. It's Dumbledore versus Voldemort. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to read the book, but see the movies. It's like, and, and, and it, yeah. I have Let's something see to, say, to say about Brit to you, Brittany. So, Brittany, you've never read the books. Yeah. yeah. And you've seen one of the movies. And I think that's surprising because I think you would really enjoy them. I think I will. And also, yeah. I think when you watch the movies and the boats, people who are Harry Potter fans will not pull up to Hogwarts with the first years, yeah. you'll get chills. I'm going to be yeah. excited. I mean, chills. I'm talking chills. I'm going to do a little binge watch this weekend, maybe. I, yeah. And, also, and, I'll, and I'll report back. And this marathon also includes uh, the Fantastic <laughs> Beasts and Where to Find Them, the first one of the prequel series that... The second one comes out this November, so yeah. it also includes the whole new batch of films. That, which is also funny, when Jake. It's fun, but it's like so depressing that Harry's not in it. I know, but it's cool because because Dumbledore will be in this one. A young Dumbledore played by Jude Law. Oh yeah, um, that's cool. And it's cool, but it's also funny when J.K. Rowling ended the. <laughs> it is. It's really cool, guys. It's cool, cool people. Have yeah. you read the books? No, I didn't read the books, but I watched all the movies. I've watched the movies a bunch of times. I just didn't like, you know, I didn't last night. I didn't like wear my outfit. And, like, so you I, didn't? Mm -hmm. I have four wands. Of course. I yeah. have two. You have four <laughs> lightsabers and you have four wands. And Gandalf's sword. Mm. I'm really you cool, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a zero friend. I was a virgin. You just said no, <laughs> You said it, we yeah. did it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm super pumped. Um, I don't know. I mean, Harry Potter won't die. Like, Jake Rowling was like, the books are over. We're done with this stuff. The movie's done. But then all of a sudden, we got I a Broadway play. We got done. everything. Yeah. <laughs> Winnie, um, Winnie the Pooh may be a clumsy, cuddly bear from the 100 Acre Wood, but he's also somewhat of a resistance leader in China. Hmm. Christopher Robin, the, <laughs> the new Disney film starring the iconic bear, has been denied a release in China. While no clear explanation has been given, many speculate that the film's denial has to do with comparisons between Chinese President Xi Jinping and Pu, who has become a symbol of political dissent in the country. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're laughing, but that's really the reason why they won't let the movie in the country, because he kind of does resemble him, and he's very sensitive to it. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, I have no, like, I, yeah, I, I, I'm sure our president sympathizes. I mean, he's constantly being compared to a Cheeto. Yeah. Cheeto, and, I, and Trump would, is trying to ban Cheetos as we speak. Yeah, I mean, this all began when um, Xi Jinping and uh, President Obama, there was a picture of uh, Tigger and uh, Pooh. Um, it is quite amazing that. And Xi Jinping in the picture had no pants on and was eating honey. Yeah, so I'm like, he's a little bit like, come on. So you're he should for understand this. the comparison. Yeah. I don't know why he's striking. so shocked. But it's amazing because, like, Xi Jinping, if just to give some context, like, this is a guy now, like, they've gotten rid of term limits for president. Like, he's basically emperor of China now. Yeah. Like, he's now enshrined in their the communist doctrine. The Democratic doctrine, Republic. The Democratic <laughs> Republic of China that he's now uh, emperor of. But um, so the fact that his more, like literally the most censored thing in China ever is a picture of from 2015 of like him in a motorcade compared to Winnie the Pooh in a toy truck. Like <laughs> the most censored picture of China <laughs> history. I get it, I get it. You get it? I do. <laughs> do. I mean, if I, look like, if I look like Winnie the Pooh, I'd be pissed off too. Yeah. Yeah. I know, like, Winnie the Pooh is so cute. I spend most of my time trying to look like Winnie the Pooh, wearing crop tops. Yeah. Like, yeah. Your yeah. Sort of, yeah. Right? Thank you, yeah. I like to get stuck in places and be like, oh, poking my butt out, be like, oh no, somebody help me. I didn't, I underestimated how thick I am. Oh, you know? Let me put on your fupa. Yeah.
<laughs> pull on the fupa, it's yeah. like beneficial. It's yeah. like pack. Yeah. So you, um, just side note too, this new, what do you guys think about this new Christopher Robin movie? Because I, to me it looks a little creepy. Creepy! Winnie the, yeah. Pooh looks, yeah. cre Winnie the Pooh looks so dirty in yeah, it. Yeah, like, wait, he looks that's like he's so absurd. He I looks like an alley cat. He looks like the cat that I... thought you were saying he looks like Alley. I was like, oh. <laughs> I know. He, he looks like, dirty like Of course. Some of us <laughs> try to look like Pooh. Not all of us, Shannon. <laughs> no, he looks like an alley cat. <laughs> an alley yeah. cat. Yeah. yeah. He's all scruffy. I'm just like, geez, Christopher Robin, brush your fucking bear. Yeah. Like, help him yeah. out. I agree. Yeah. Put yeah. him in the washer just once a yeah. year. You yeah. Know? They all have that scraggly look. Yeah. I don't they like They can be cleaned up. They need some soap. Um, they need yeah. some soap yeah. and some water. It's kind of weird. Like, the trailer is, um, like, his wife is sitting him down. And is like, where are you going? And he's like, uh, nowhere. And then you see him in the yard. He's like talking to these bears. I'm like, okay, divorce him. <laughs> yeah. But you know it, I mean? and also, Leave like, him. movies like this show you like, oh, these like geniuses or whatever, these like creators or whatever are weird. Yeah. Like, well, these, like, no. Smart people are so weird. Like, I seriously, don't... you're such a Ravenclaw. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think Christopher Robin was ever supposed to grow up. You know what right. I mean? He was six for a reason. Right. I think seeing him as an adult talking to stuffed animals like, is issues. uncomfortable. It yeah. is uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, anyway, moving on. Uh -huh. Chrissy Teigen and John Legend were vacationing in Bali, Indonesia when an earthquake hit. Chrissy took to Twitter to live tweet the earthquake and what she was feeling, and one tweet said, oh man, we are on stilts. It feels like a ride. 15 solid seconds of, holy shit, this is happening. Drama. <laughs> I tried to give it the drama it was yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah, she this was is in, so oh, Chrissy Teigen. This is so it's Chrissy. happening. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen is just like, in any situation you put her, she's like, I'm just like you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know what I mean? We know you can like, die. We know the yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And at least, yeah. at least we'll all, we always will have the comfort of knowing that we'll always know if she's in danger or not. Mm -hmm. Like, no, any situation, she will be live tweeting it. Mm -hmm. There's a hurricane. There's a tornado. Someone's in my house. Like, ah, <laughs> like, okay, should we help her? I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, should we do something? Or just wait until the, the tweets She's just like in. our control sample. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want everything to happen yeah. to her. And we're like, that's the normal response. Right. It is, though. She comments on everything. And I do find myself, like, retweeting her more than any celebrity, I think. Oh, wow. she's great. She's such a truth teller. Yes, she's very fun on social media. Yeah, yeah except for the earthquake thing was actually very serious. Very serious. You know, yeah. people lost their lives, but I don't think she was making light of it. I think some people were like criticizing her, but I was like, I don't think she was making light of it. No, I think she was, she was just like, oh my shaking. God, what do you yeah. it's a 6.9 magnitude yeah. earthquake. This is crazy. She also lives in LA and like earthquake mm -hmm. Twitter is like a lifestyle there. So totally. whenever there's like an <laughs> earthquake, you're like, did you guys feel it? Did you feel it? I felt it. That's I was sleeping and I woke up and I was there for the earthquake and you're like, it was a 1.2 chill. No, literally it's a topic yeah. of conversation for, half, for like an hour yeah. when you go into work that day. I'm like, feel the earthquake. You feel the, oh no, I'm on the east side. I was on the west yeah, side. I, I felt know, it. Oh my God. I'm walking across the hall. Right? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Why do people live there? Because the weather the is amazing. Place in the world. Uh, the weather is amazing. The weather. <laughs> I hear the groans in New York. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. I like, um, like in a lot of her Snapchats, she'll like have John Legend like right. make little cameos that are really cute. Um, but recently she's like been like putting on different um, headbands mm. on Snapchat and you hear John in the background being like it's the headband of the day <laughs> and like singing in his beautiful so voice and it's just amazing like it would be so fun to have a husband like that. I know. They are so funny. Have you seen the commercials where he's like making fun of her not being able to select a channel but he like sings he's like she can never decide what to watch and she's just <laughs> and I'm just like oh. I love him and did you hear the song that he did about Luna their daughter's uh, diapers? No. Luna made a stinky poopy. Oh, yeah. wow. And it, Grammy. Wait, and they put it in a commercial. Oh, yeah. They put it in a commercial. And they made it like a Pampers commercial. I know. God, they're the God, best. they're a cool I can't couple. wait to hear the song when their daughter's grown up and she gets her period. She's <laughs> like, she's gonna be plugging. <laughs> she's a woman now. And she's like, Dad, stop. <laughs> it's gonna be good. <sighs> well, a new 10-episode series starring Emma Stone and Jonah Hill is premiering on Netflix on September 21st. First, the show titled Maniac is directed by Kerry Fukunaga and tells the story of two people who are brought into the later stages of a pharmaceutical trial. Let's take a look at the trailer. Do you know where you are right now? I'm in a drug trial. What do you think is wrong with you? I'm sick. But I don't matter. What would you say this trial is showing you about yourself? Is this therapy now? It's not therapy. It's science. Once you begin to appreciate the structure of the mind, there's no reason to believe that anything about us can't be changed. Pain 
can be destroyed. The mind can be solved. How many of your subjects have ended up catatonic? Zero. Roughly. My head doesn't work right. I thought maybe these people could fix me. Sounds stupid. That doesn't sound stupid to me. Okay, people, let's begin. In five, four, three, two, one. My mind is playing tricks. reality brain magic shit i don't know what's real and what's not something's wrong what did you do come on wake up every time i separate them they just find their way back together you're not protecting those people in there Multi-reality brain magic shit. Right. Sign me up. I don't literally think I'd add for take pills. Like yeah. take pills, you will yeah. be in Lord of the Rings. Oh uh, like, no, no, not yeah. just take pills. Take take pills from Justin Thoreau. Like, oh. I'm like, yes, you love whatever, Justin whatever, whatever he gives me. You the only thing that's him. missing in that show is his mustache. Right. Mm. Oh, oh, I don't like him with a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. You don't? Justin Thoreau with a mustache? No, yeah. I don't. What, what was he? What was the mustache in again? A lot of projects. Most projects. I like him with the scruff. Yeah. I, I like, like him with scrub. everything. If he had a turd over his lip, I'd be like, let's do this. Well, maybe he'll run in sweatpants. Never know. They could bring oh, it back. Ooh, thank you for that. Um, so the, <laughs> it's the guy who um, directed this is Kerry uh, Fukunaga, who mm -hmm. directed the first season, True Detective, um, which was arguably its best season. I mean, yeah, good. him and Nick, and who, beautiful. who's the writer. They, it was right? ri all written by Nick Pizzolatto and then all directed by Kerry. It's so, like Nick Pizzolatto. The blah, blah, two blah. of them, like their mind meld, made such a perfect season. And it's written by a guy named Patrick Somerville who wrote for The Leftovers, which mm. oh, um, there we so go. A weird kind sense. of it all makes sense sort of. Weird I'm not gonna see it for any of those show. reasons. I just really yeah. love Emma Stone. Like She's great. I love Emma Stone. I feel like she picks really different weird projects. You don't really know how to typecast her necessarily. She is just a crazy doll that came to life. She really um. is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll see it for that, but it looks weird as hell. Her and Jonah Hill are such an interesting and odd pairing. Right. Yeah. Well, also it's, it's the first time it's like super bad, right? Right. Yeah. They've been together and like super bad to this show, which is kind of different. I mean, yeah. 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 well, they've yeah. both grown. They're, they've both been Academy Award nominated. Has yeah. He been? yeah. She won. Yeah. She won, so. and Did he, he was. Yeah. I think he was. Yeah. He was for Moneyball. Oh, for the Big Short yes. or something. Moneyball. Moneyball. Yeah, Moneyball. I think it was supporting. I mean, and he was also he did a great job, a bang up job in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, he did. Yes. Um, so they're both. They've both like positioned themselves as like, serious actors. He's, this is long from their super bad days. Yeah. I'm excited to see them in the role. Jonah looks a little creepy in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing yeah. looks skinny. Jonah Hill like, is always kind of an interesting look too. Yeah. Yeah. His it's face not, looks weird. Yeah. Makes I me uncomfortable. Love when he's in that shot, I think he's in the '80s where he has a mullet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks so good in a mullet. I don't know why I like mullets and mustaches. Something happened to me. Yeah, what I'm something happened. Out. Um, build brunch. I'm like, wait, the visions are coming back. Where am I? It becomes your you therapy know? kind of. Yeah. What's bit. in here? Yeah. I don't know. Would you guys ever do like these pharmaceutical testing? Like that's sort of the I whole premise is that drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do you guys Maybe. like to do drugs? <laughs> um, it's like the whole premise is like they're trying to like get rid of something, so they're doing these like trials, right. and it, it has all these weird effects. Would you guys ever be like give your body over to science in that way? I mean, I think that a lot of people that actually are involved in pharmaceutical testing need are people to. that need to. Yeah, it's not true. just yeah. like oh, let me try this drug. You know, <laughs> it's the you know looking for something that will help will yeah, hold that's them. True. But uh, this trailer actually gives me, uh, it reminds me a lot of the trailer we, we watched on uh, brunch last week with Maya Rudolph oh. and oh, yeah. uh, Fred Forever. Armisen, uh, which is a similar like uh, creepy vibe, but it's being marketed as like a different genre show. Yeah. Like that was like comedy and felt dark and this is supposed to be like sci-fi and feel, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It is sort of like weird. this dark humor thing that I think well, makes us feel weird but good. Yeah. Definitely there's a theme <laughs> of like questioning life. 
And like that's a whole theme of like in TV right now of like questioning forever and life and yeah. time and your mind from Westworld to this Fred Armisen show to this show. I, there's, there's definitely the theme. Oh, good job pulling in Westworld. Yeah, yeah what Westworld, that's all it's about, that's right? So Especially true. humanity and life and what is forever and immortal. And I think this kind of is in that realm, which also the leftovers was too. So it's kind of this whole theme of what TV, where TV's been going now. So I will I will watch this. Yeah. It seems it seems oh. very interesting. I think it's reflecting that a lot of us feel like we're living in an alternate reality. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wonder why. Yeah. I think we're seeing that in the art like 10 times over. Right. Sure. Art imitates life. Yes. Right. Or does life imitate art? Mm, I love <laughs> I love to get high and watch TV. <laughs> I seriously do. Like every night I'm like stoned watching TV and it makes me so happy. Right. <laughs> I yeah. think that's a common feeling. Yeah. yeah, I just love it. Good. I think our audience is high right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of them are. They're high. I haven't yeah. heard from them. And I think a lot of people were probably still last night watching the Bachelorette oh. finale, Woo! which I takes us on to today's guest. Last night was the finale of the Bachelorette, and Chris Harrison, as he always promises, it was filled with drama. To help us sort through our feelings, we are joined today by Emma Gray and Claire Fallon, who have a podcast dedicated to all things Bachelorette called Here to Make Friends. Please put your hands together for Emma and Claire. Hi, I'm Lucas. Nice to meet you. Hi, Lucas. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi. Emma. Yeah. Hi. 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 Welcome. Welcome, ladies. I don't even know where to start with this one because oh, Chris Harrison is always Sorry. like, this is the most dramatic. But I think a lot of people were actually shocked last night with her pick. Were you guys shocked? I wish I had been more shocked. I was disappointed, but not shocked. Okay. I'm just, okay. I, this whole season, I'm so tired. Uh -huh. I'm just so tired. Right. Because the episodes keep you up so late. Yeah. <laughs> that is certainly part of it. Eight like, hours three, long. Really. Three hours is too many. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, tell us what you, th just like, tell me what you think about the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so she chose Garrett. Yes. What do you think about Garrett? Yes. Yeah, so this season was a weird one because as soon as the show premiered, there was a lot of information out there about Garrett that wasn't super flattering. Um, people found that he had liked a number of posts on Instagram that uh, made jokes about um, throwing children, yep. uh, undocumented children over a wall mm -hmm. or jokes about transgender people, um, feminists. Yeah. 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 Park, so the, Parkland, crisis actors. Yeah, yeah. Right. accusing yeah. the Parkland yeah. survivors of being crisis actors. Yeah. Really you know, over the line thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, kind of an early tell that Garrett won was that the show uh, rushed out to defend him and made sure that he put a statement out, Becca put a statement out. Uh, they clearly wanted to align behind him instead of sort of right. throwing him to the wolves of social media. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of early in the season thought, mm, Garrett might not be for us. Right. <laughs> um, but he's for Becca. That's like the yeah. nicest yeah. way to yeah. say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, not really our brand. Yeah, not our type. But <laughs> yeah, I, oh. oh sorry. I'm not a, a regular Bachelor or Bachelorette watcher, but I of course watched last night. I was amazed by the walks. There's a lot of walking. Yeah, walking oh. on beaches, walking, pensive, pensive walking. walks. You don't see the camera. And I was. This is what I'm amazed about because I sweat if I'm wearing a bathing suit outside. <laughs> These guys are wearing suit. Blake was sweating bullets. I felt yeah. bad for the guy. That, I was like, yeah. this really adds insult to injury. This yes. guy is getting his proposal rejected and he can't even figure out whether like it's sweat yeah. or tears. Yeah. They're all just blended all together. Blend. And then you see him do with his jacket yeah. and you're like, oh, oh poor guy. Finally handed him a towel. I know. Yeah. Like, at this point, everything's a towel. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm it's just all like, hands on deck. I was, <laughs> yeah. like, poor I was more sad about him like he's sweating I know. profusely on camera. <laughs> I, I like always I cry when I'm sweating that hard. Jumped in the water after. Yes. There's like <laughs> I was like, jump in, it looks beautiful. That would have been the real solution. That would have been the real solution. What do you think of this trend of a lot of the winners actually receiving the first First impression rose. Mm. Because that happened this season. That happened with Rachel and Brian. The last yeah. three bachelorettes. Yeah. Are, so it's now four bachelorettes wow. are all amazing? chosen the guy they gave the first impression rose. I think it just indicates that women know know what we want. Very know true. what we yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> they very, don't very need true. to have a whole show called The Bachelor. Yeah. They just have night one. She's like, I know which guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Right here. Into Everyone you, else can let's go home. Do. That'd right? be the most amazing season. Like, oh, wait. We can all go home, folks. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what the proposal is. Like, right. clearly, that's they figured out that that works. So. Yeah, that's the that show is version. trash, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But not this one. Yeah. This yeah. one's not trash. It's it's high quality, quality yeah. intellectual yeah. affair. Really. So, yeah. what do you think about Blake? And like, do you think he's going to be our bachelor? Because he looked the part. Now everybody loves him. What do you think? 
Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. Often the runner up isn't The Bachelor mm. because they're so devastated right. that it's hard to believe they could ever open their heart to love again. <laughs> like, I think yeah. Blake is going to die faithful to Becca. That's yeah. how I feel in my heart. Of course. But uh, so often it's like the number three person, mm. maybe Jason. He's had a good Bachelor edit. Um, but The Bachelor does have a little more time to, you know, reacclimate to society. The Bachelorette gets named uh, right after The Bachelor. Right. Um, so maybe. I think he'd be a good Bachelor. He's very emotional. They will certainly talk to him. Yeah, I, I would, would like a season just full of male tears. Yeah. That would be yeah. cathartic for me as a yeah. viewer. So. It's a good example to set for men to be emotionally vulnerable. I really like that. Uh, but, you know, I think we're also, we might see a little auditioning on Paradise mm. because mm. we did have a Bachelor come out of Paradise. Nick, right. right? Yeah. yeah Nick. Yes. Oh, yeah. And at this point, they all, all the guys who want to be Bachelor know what to say. They all do the media rounds and they go, the process, I just really believe that it works. Right. And I think that after the devastation with Becca, I'm ready right. soon to open yeah. my heart to love again. Right. Yeah. After my heart yeah. heals in maybe three to four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And I see yeah. a contract. Um, yeah. no, I, I, 30 I, hot women are presented. I did love like, how Blake, how will you move on? I'm like, oh, he's gonna become the bachelor. Like 30 women yes. throw him something. I'm like, he'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how many women slipped into his DMs last night? Oh, oh. Yeah. Like, it's gotta be crazy. so bad for the guys who get dumped yeah. until two months later when we realize every woman on the planet <laughs> yeah. has been trying to get with them in right. their DMs and they all turn out. Fine. Well, I think like that might be the reason why. I mean, do you see a, a real future for Becca and yeah. Garrett? I mean, I often think when young people get engaged on television and then suddenly gain like 200,000 Instagram followers, it's so easy to want to play around. Mm -hmm. Certainly, and we, we certainly <laughs> yeah. know that that <laughs> happens. Although, the last handful of bachelorettes are all still with right. the guys they chose. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess. You know, we'll see. I'll be interested to see whether um, their differing worldviews present right. more of a problem navigating a relationship in the real world where, you know, you can't just ignore all the news right. and um, yeah. you have yeah. to actually grapple with real things. I picture them just like, I like, miss like, Trump just put a child, please, yeah. like, we're not gonna look at that, no. Um, but of course, according to Garrett and Becca, they, they, they are growing a lot. There's a lot of growing yeah. happening. So I believe they grow mm -hmm. together. They're gonna be grow to be fine, you know? Yeah. A lot of non-specific growing. Not to, non -specific I don't know. Direction. Exactly. Let's not ask too many questions. Every day is like Thanksgiving with the family. Right. No, don't worry about it. I really thought that uh, Becca's uncle stole the episode for me, mm. and I was just kind of, you know, hoping that he would be the next bachelor. <laughs> right. I would watch a season of Uncle yeah, Chuck. I would sign up in a heartbeat. Yeah. I thought he was really cool. I loved how he was like, I like that Garrett's a poet. And I was like, did Garrett make, like, be poetry <laughs> and I miss it? Have you read poetry? Right. Yeah, it was like, like uh, no, he was just crying. It's he called like, him a renaissance man because he was crying the entire time. Yeah, and he was also <laughs> crying, and they were crying together, and I was like, maybe they should just date. Right. <laughs> I actually That'd thought the tears quit. were like a little intense. Like if a guy was meeting my family for the first time and cried the entire time, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're so lot. tired by this <laughs> point. <laughs> they're just like waiting for something to set off, you know, yeah. the waterworks. It does seem like, it, it's funny because like on one hand I was like, like when they returned to Blake after he was dumped and his dead side in the studio, like his mother was just killed. Like, I mean, it's oh, the most saddest thing in the world. But then you, I also kind of do get like, there's so much pressure put on you. You're like, you basically, force yourself, whether genuinely or not, to fall in love with this person, and then you are dumped in front of the world, it must just be like losing a presidential election, I guess. It's like, it must be what Hillary <laughs> yeah, felt like. Just it's just like, like it's just, I'm sure she can relate. The same impact, Yeah, 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 yeah. Bachelor, Hillary, yeah, they're the Absolutely. Same. <laughs> Hillary should go on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. no, it, is, it is, seems like a very traumatic experience. Yeah, I think it's a really intense, you know, they describe sort of the Bachelor bubble that you find yourself in. I think people need at least a month after to be like, wait, what were my feelings? Let mm -hmm. me sort out what was real and what was the fact that I had literally nothing else to think about and no access to books, television, <laughs> music, other or women. any, yeah, yeah. Other women. <laughs> any friends other than producers who are making a TV show. You know? Yeah. Oh, we've watched Unreal. Yeah. We know. <laughs> I think it would really mess you up. I, yeah. like, I was thinking about last night after Blake proposed, and he turns to the camera and he said, you know, I never really considered if she would say no. Mm. Mm. And I was like, how was that the case that <laughs> right. you didn't consider that? I mean, it seemed I, like he was considering nothing else during <laughs> the last week or so, so I was surprised to hear him yeah. say that. Yeah, I couldn't believe he said that. And then I thought, because he seemed so genuinely surprised, how that really would like mess with your head. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he said something that 
I think hit home to a lot of people, which is now I have to go through everything that's coming alone. That was yeah. sad. And that I was think, sad. yeah, I think he and Becca had talked about how they would handle press and how they would handle the secrecy. And instead he was like, she's gonna have a partner through all this and I'm just gonna be by myself, not able to yeah. tell anyone what's happening. And we all know what it's like to just have that feeling of, oh, everything I was sharing with a partner, I'm now gonna deal with right. by myself. And that's really tough. Yeah. Yeah. When he was like, yeah. they're gonna be so happy at the engagement. Right. Like, I was like, yeah. oh God, oh, because he had, had again probably played through what he would say. Yeah, I mean, he got to say some of it, but it's just like he had to then watch somebody else do yeah. it. I'm sure it didn't feel like getting to say some of it. Yeah, <laughs> but it was like, it was why like, I did wish you I let did. me? <laughs> I know. But at least I remember in past seasons, they've let the guy say something and then get down on a knee. Hey. I'm glad she likes. They've changed Stopped. that format, yeah. That's, yeah, that's just cruel. That's it's cool, because she's like looking at him like trying, like, she's like with this like subtle, ugly face, like, oh, I know she's what She's like, when do I do? step yeah. in? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I think uh, it's, what did he said something like, um, Oh, I'm blanking, but I, I, he was, oh, when he was, oh my God, when sorry. When he said, my instincts are always right. Do you yeah, know oh, no, oh, yeah. He kinda, I felt like he manifested yeah. his own downfall right. when he was in that room, because I really thought he was gonna get picked, and then he was like, I feel it in my gut, my gut's always right, and the next thing you know, he was chopped, and right. I was like, oh, fuck, I know this isn't chopped, but, but you know what I mean. yeah. <laughs> You've been but chopped. But basically, but also, when, also because Becca was saying, like, which I thought was like, you were so stable, and we clicked so well, and it was like nothing you did. It's like such a hard thing to hear, it's like they were good together and he had every right to think like whether he had those insecurities or not like oh she could pick me because like we're so in love or whatever but to hear that it's like oh so like what am i too boring or too that like it just i feel like that would it felt very relatable though yes, like how yeah. many of us had have had relationships where we want to pinpoint the thing that went wrong and it's just like there just was something right. missing or something i just missing. stopped feeling that way about you and it's nothing you did and, and that's why you know yeah. watching Blake was so affecting as a viewer. I did wish that she hadn't said, you were right, it was gonna be you the whole time. I because know. what right. is going to mess with him more in a future relationship? Like, you can never believe that things are gonna last yeah, because have some right issues. now it's great, yeah, yeah. But maybe tomorrow it'll be Garrett, you know. So that, yeah. that part I thought he probably could have stood not yeah. hearing. So what do you guys think about Bachelor in Paradise? That premieres tonight. <laughs> We've got a Another lot of- five you know, hours. We've got a cast We're gearing up. We're gearing up. Yeah. yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready for a little <laughs> bit more lighthearted stuff. I'm ready for Jordan the model right. to just- oh, right. yeah. And oh. all of his weird one-liners. I'm like convinced he's a Westworld prototype. <laughs> <laughs> just like that's how they're He would totally be a host. Yeah. Oh, he would. Yeah. The Bachelor is where they would integrate yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Just you wouldn't be able to tell. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And then Colton, that was his Colton. name, right? The, the virgin who's crying. Colton and no. Tia, that, <laughs> the virgin. I mean, Poor sorry, That's a, I, I was shocked when I heard that he was. A, like, I was shocked. I don't know why people like. I get it; it's surprising, but like, I want people to stop giving him shit for. No, me. it's not a bad thing. Are people giving him shit? I think they're just being like surprised about it. Right? Yeah. I think the guys on the show said some things about how it was yeah. a skeleton in his closet mm -hmm. or a red yeah. flag. Uh, I think that yeah, probably uh, got in his head, but people have been getting behind him, I think, yeah. in Bachelor yeah. Nation. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. think of that trailer, though, with him and Tia? Tia? I mean, that looks like drama. Oh, yeah, I think the producers were like, yes. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is our crown jewel, we have them. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, from what I've seen, I think they send Colton in a little late just to kind of stir mm. up drama, so. You know, they're very they're very smart on Bachelor in Paradise. They'll set one relationship up and then send the one person in that can completely destroy things, and that just happens over and over and over again for, you know, 10 yeah. episodes. Yeah. If you go in saying, I'm only here for Colton, they're not gonna have you and Colton show up the first day and yeah. right. settle into a couple. That's just not good television. Yeah. I love so. when they say they're only here for someone. Like, I'm only here for, it's just so stupid. <laughs> yeah. But um, is this the uh, this first season back from Bachelor in Paradise after Corinne's yeah. whole after episode? Yeah. the scandal, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to see if they've made any thoughtful adjustments whatsoever. There's already a scandal that's come out of it though with Leah and Becca, right? Yeah, that's an interesting situation because it seems like that was not a Bachelor in Paradise oh. scandal per se. It seems like what happened is Becca saw some posts maybe uh, on Reddit, people sent her DMs indicating that Leo has a history of sending women unsolicited dick pics oh. and otherwise Very charming behaving thing. Yes. as a creep toward them. And so she posted a bunch of them on her Instagram story. Leo responded. It became a bit heated. There was litigation discussed. Um, and I don't know if there are any roots in Bachelor in Paradise because as we can see that Leo has uh, 
uh, some sort of hookup with Kendall, her mm -hmm. good friend, on, in Paradise, and maybe that doesn't end well, but um, it seems like there are other reasons that Leo is having Yeah, it this. seems like it was a separate thing, but I'm sure it will, it will obviously play into the way that we watch Leo yeah. on the show. I mean, how could it not? So you guys have your podcast. I know you talk about Bachelor and Bachelorette. Do you guys also do Bachelor in Paradise? Like, oh, yeah. what are your yeah. topics in a... <laughs> You know. Oh yeah, we we talk about all all the how to make the whole world. Yeah. 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 How to make friends. Yeah, yeah, we tell people how to make friends. Um, <laughs> we just befriend everyone who comes on the show. That's yeah. actually why we created the podcast. We we're like we don't have enough friends. Yeah. So we have to recruit them in this very rough. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I mean, we started the podcast because we wanted to talk about a show that we loved, but also the way that it intersects with a lot of real world mm -hmm. issues, uh, feminism, uh, love and sex and dating, and, sex and, and the way dating. that yeah, what the show that you know the show has been on since. 2002. It's one of the longest running reality television shows. So to me, I'm always interested in why has this had staying power? What does it kind of say about the world around us? Why are we so obsessed mm -hmm. with it? Even, you know, sometimes uh, beyond our better judgment, <laughs> in spite of our better judgment. Yeah. So, For example, last season on Paradise was a disaster, and yet we're going to watch again. Like, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing we like to examine. <laughs> well, you guys are not alone, and I love that your podcast is a destination for sycophants like me to <laughs> listen to other people talk about The Bachelor. So thanks so much for joining us today. Guys, give it up for Emma and Claire. Yeah. And make sure to listen to their podcast, Here to Make Friends. It's really good. And we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table.